So far, we studied a number of uh, important uh, issues regarding uh, generic RF transmitters. For example, carrier leakage, the problem of IQ imbalance, and the transmitter linearity. While these issues are uh, more or less important for all types of uh, transmitters, the issue which I'm going to share with you right now and I'm going to discuss uh, is uh, particularly important uh, for a dual conversion transmitter. This issue is called oscillator pooling. In order to uh, appreciate the root cause of the oscillator pooling, let's uh, revisit the structure of a direct conversion transmitter. For the direct conversion transmitter, we know that uh, the in-phase and quadrature components of the baseband signal are fed to a pair of mixers after down conversion by the uh, local, oscillators, uh, local oscillator at running at the frequency omega L O, the, the outputs of the mixers are power combined and then uh, uh, is fed to the power amplifier. Okay, so in a, a dual conversion transmitter, of course, we know that the center frequency of the PA uh, signal is exactly located at the same frequency as the oscillation frequency of the LO. In other words, omega LO and omega RF are the same. Okay, so uh, the issue here is that PA is a large signal circuit supposedly producing sufficient amount uh, or significant amount of output power uh, to the uh, antenna load. For example, it is not too, it's not too far-fetched to assume that a CMOS power amplifier can, um, at RF frequency, can produce uh, output power, average output powers as high as 30 dBm, and uh, assuming that the uh, imp load impedance is 50 ohm, then this translates to 20 volt peak-to-peak -peak voltage. The 20 volt peak-to-peak -peak voltage uh, or signal at the uh, omega L O frequency may couple to different parts of the circuits running at the uh, running at the same frequency. Of particular interest is the coupling effect of the PA uh, on the uh, local oscillator's performance. In fact, the PA large output power may couple to local oscillator's terminals through a number of mechanisms. For example, if uh, we are designing these circuits, uh, the PA on chip PA uh, alongside the local oscillator, it could be through the common silicon substrate. It could be also through the package parasitics. And if the PA is implemented off chip, it can be through the PCB traces. Okay, so the problem here is that the PA output spectrum uh, is uh, having large power and is also concentrated at the LO frequency. To analyze the effect of the PA output coupling to the LO traces or to LO terminals, let's consider one spectral line in band within the band of the output PA spectrum. Of course, the PA signal is modulated and as a result occupies non-zero bandwidth around the LO frequency. Here, for the sake of simplicity and in order to get some intuition about the uh, on the intuition about the nature of the coupling, the PA coupling to the LO uh, terminal, we just assume one spectral line at an offset frequency delta omega uh, away from the, um, uh, from the uh, center frequency omega LO. So this uh, spectral line can be modeled as an impulse of equal energy occurring at the frequency omega LO plus delta omega. So this impulse is applied to the terminal of the oscillator. So again, this impulse models one spectral line in, uh, within the band of the PA output spectrum at frequency omega L plus delta omega. We would like to see uh, what kind of effect this impulse will have on the PA performance. By the way, this phenomenon is called injection pooling. The injection pooling has been extensively studied by a number of uh, scientists before. Uh, I would like to refer you to this uh, interesting paper appeared in Journal of Solid State Circuit, September uh, 2004, for more information about the nature um, of the injection pooling in oscillators. Here, going back to our uh, discussion, again, we assume that the uh, spectral line uh, within the band of the PA uh, applied to the LO is modeled uh, as an impulse at frequency omega O plus delta omega. Of course, this frequency differs from the LO oscillation frequency at omega LO. So we would like to see what, what's going to happen if an impulse at a different, slightly different frequency 
omega, omega LO plus delta omega is applied to the LO, uh, LO circuit. What kind of phenomenon uh, will be occurring as a result of this injection? So uh, if, you, if you follow through the uh, studies uh, of the prior work, in particular the paper that I mentioned in, appearing in journals of the state circuit, we see that uh, the, as a result of the injection pooling, the output phase of the LO, which was, for example, constant in the absence of injection pooling, is now modulated periodically. So the modulation of the output phase of the LO in a periodic way means that the oscillation frequency right now, I call it omega LO nu, is no longer equal to omega LO. In fact, we can say that omega LO is also varying with time as a result of uh, periodic uh, variation of the uh, output phase of the local oscillator. So what it means here is that the output of the local oscillator is no longer a simple sinusoidal single tone, is no longer this, for example. Let's go back here. Is no longer this. Due to the injection pooling, uh, for example, the oscillator's uh, frequency, let me use uh, another another color to signify the point. So the oscillation, uh, the oscillator's output may have some kind of compression in frequency and expansion in frequency, right? So this is uh, just the result of the injection pooling. Uh, so what it means here is that then omega LO itself uh, under the injection pooling is no longer constant. And in fact, uh, it experiences some variation. This means that in fact, the LO output looks like a frequency modulated signal. This frequency modulated signal, again, is due to the fact that uh, an impulse at an offset frequency is injected uh, to the LO circuit, and therefore the LO uh, output signal is no longer a simple sinusoidal signal, but um, a frequency modulated signal. Okay, so uh, from the frequency, in the frequency domain, the output of the oscillator is no longer at what one single frequency. We see that uh, there are impulses occurring at different frequencies uh, with a constant um, frequency spacing. In fact, impulses are located away from the input frequency um, by as much as uh, a frequency which we call omega b. The spacing between the impulses is omega b, and omega b, in fact, is uh, uh, proven to be the frequency of the phase variation of the oscillator. So the phase variation, the time derivative of the phase variation uh, is omega b, and omega b is, in fact, the spacing of the output impulses appearing at the output of the oscillator. So again, what happened here is that as a result of the PA coupling to the LO, the LO uh, output signal will no longer be a single tone. Uh, what it means here is that the more, more or less we have a frequency modulated signal at the, uh, at the output of the local oscillator. And this FM signal at the output of the frequency at the output of the oscillator will in fact affect the performance. Because remember that the local oscillator uh, should supposedly upconvert the signal to higher frequency. Now, if you have F an FM modulated signal, what it means here is that then the modulate, uh, modulation, the, the frequency of conversion is also affected by uh, this frequency modulated signal. In what way? It means that uh, more undesired harmonics and mixing spurs will appear at the output of a mixer. And therefore, this contributes to the transmitter nonlinearity and also the degradation of error vector magnitude. So the oscillator pooling, as a result, creates all these sorts of problems. Again, affecting the nonlinearity of affecting the linearity of the entire transmitter, uh, disto introduces distortion on the modulated signal uh, while the signal is being um, uh, upconverted by a mixer subjected to uh, a local oscillator, which is injection. In, which, is, which is pooled, whose frequency is pooled by the uh, PA output power. Okay, so uh, therefore the oscillator pooling will be detrimental to the T, uh, transmitter performance. Okay, so one important question that may arise is that at what PA output power level the injection pooling will be significant? Now that we know that injection pooling may cause, for example, a distortion uh, on the transmitter, non-linear on the transmitter, EVM degradation, how can we make sure that injection pooling uh, is not an issue? And that is again translated to the amount of minimum 
PA output power level, that injection pooling is still not significant. The answer to this question depends on a, num uh, on a number of factors. For example, if the internal nodes of the local oscillator experience large signal swing, uh, then the LO pooling, namely coupling of from the PA output to the LO terminal, might not be as significant. If the oscillators, uh, if the oscillators tank exhibits high quality factor, then the injection pooling and the, and the notion and the phenomenon of frequency modulation might not be significant. Also, uh, rather than using a single-ended PA, if we use a differential PA, then the uh, pooling effect might be degraded or might be lowered by as much as 30 to 40 dB. So that's the reason that uh, differential, fully differential uh, signaling and fully differential path from the baseband all the way to the output of the power amplifier is suggested. One of the reasons is to minimize the LO pooling. And the fourth factor is that if the LO is going to be realized using a uh, phase lock loop, the uh, feedback loop within the phase lock base frequency synthesizer, how much it, uh, how, how powerful it is to basically counteract with the pooling effect. If the uh, entire local oscillator, if the entire synthesizer loop is strong enough to counteract the effect of the pooling, then the oscillator pooling is uh, not very significant. And finally, the symmetry of the layout, PA layout in particular, and the spacing between the uh, LO layout and the uh, power amplifier layout and the uh, shields that we can use, for example, inside the substrate uh, in order to isolate the local oscillator from the uh, PA would play important, an important role to minimize the oscillator pooling. Another important technique in order to avoid the LO pooling uh, would be on the architecture of the choice when it comes to the transmitter design. If you make sure that, the, for example, in choosing the transmitter architecture, if the PA output frequency and the LO frequency are away from each other, then of course the LO pooling will not have uh, an important effect. However, again, I would like to mention that uh, we are looking at a particular transmitter architecture, which is a, a direct conversion transmitter architecture. And essentially in a direct conversion transmitter architecture, uh, fundamentally the local oscillator frequency and the PA center frequency should be the same. So that, in fact, creates a dilemma. What kind of alternative uh, schemes or structures are available uh, to realize a trans uh, direct conversion transmitter so as to avoid LO pooling? And one such architecture is shown here where the LO, uh, LO frequency is at twice the center frequency, and then we inject the LO frequency uh, to a divide by two frequency divider, if you are using, for example, a flip-flop base frequency divider, we know that uh, the quadrature components or signals are available at the output of a flip-flop base frequency divider. And therefore, this frequency divider is uh, essential not only to make sure that the LO frequency and the center frequency of the PA are away from each other, but also it can be used to generate the quadrature components for the LO signal. Therefore, uh, this divider... Uh, generates omega L over 2 with quadrature phases necessary for a direct conversion uh, transmit architecture. So this architecture, the way that I introduce here, is widely adopted for two important reasons. First of all, uh, since the LO frequency is chosen to be twice the center frequency, the notion of injection pooling is largely alleviated. Also, the availability of the frequency divider means that we can uh, we, we have found a way to generate the quadrature phases for the LO signal, which could be otherwise a difficult task to realize a quadrature phases, at, for example, at high frequencies. Okay, so I would like to also mention that this architecture, despite the fact that the LO is chosen to be twice the center frequency, cannot eliminate entirely the injection pooling. The reason is because of the PA nonlinearity. In fact, due to the PA nonlinearity, particularly if the PA is a single-ended uh, topology, it may produce a non-zero amount of power at its second harmonic. And therefore, still this non-zero uh, second harmonic might have sufficient power to cause injection pooling. Nonetheless, the isolation techniques and proper layout may minimize this pooling if the LO frequency is chosen to be twice the center frequency. The principal challenge that this architecture faces is that the LO frequency is now running at twice the center frequency. So what it means here is that, for example, if this DCT is intended for 5G applications, millimeter wave 5G applications, 
with uh, an RF frequency of 30 gigahertz, then this LO frequency will be at 60 gigahertz. We have to design a local oscillator oscillating at 60 gigahertz. And this by itself is a challenge, particularly if you want to design a low phase noise, local oscillator at very high frequencies. And finally, very similar to uh, the wireless, wireless receivers, we can also think about uh, other alternative topologies for a transmitter. For example, we can think about a heterodyning uh, technique in regard to a transmitter. Shown here is one example where I'm showing a dual up conversion transmitter where the first up conversion is done using a quadrature up conversion to an intermediate frequency. And then this intermediate, intermediate frequency is further up converted by a second LO to uh, the uh, carrier frequency uh, where the PA is operating. One uh, interesting alternative uh, to this dual up conversion transmitter is shown here where uh, there is a relationship, a specific relationship between the LO frequencies. We don't have to choose the LO1 and LO2 to run at different frequencies. In fact, LO2 can be generated, and then we can use a divide by two frequency divider, not only to generate the quadrature component, but also choose the first LO to be at half the frequency of LO2. If we do that, then we come up with a very interesting architecture the necessary quadrature components for the local oscillator is generated using this frequency divider. And also we have a very nice LO planning, LO frequency planning. Also, uh, what it means here is that then uh, we can uh, appropriately vary the LO frequency. Uh, and as a result, we can have a sliding IF transmitter architecture.